Hey everybody, retired at 40. Chances are if you have a harvest right, you're a gardener. And if you're a gardener, chances are you have these vegetables on hand most of the time. So today we're going to freeze dry all kinds of vegetables. We're going to do greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, broccoli, peas, zucchini, cucumber, and carrots. Probably the most common vegetables you'll find in a garden. If you've never checked out this channel, we do some freeze drying, some cooking, and you follow me on my journey through retirement at the age of 40. If you are a gardener and you have a harvest right, more than likely you have an abundance of one or all of these things at some point in the year, if not more than once a year. For me, this is where the harvest right shines. Uh, we eat a lot of vegetables and we always have a big garden and it's hard to keep things that don't have a ton of preservatives in them and wax, you know, whatever. Something that comes out of the garden tends to spoil quite a bit faster than something that you buy at the store. These are the most common vegetables that you would find in a garden and we're going to see what out of all of this tends to freeze dry and rehydrate the best. So for potatoes, you want to blanch them before you freeze dry them. But I'm just going to do a small batch of them and I'm not going to blanch them. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't blanch them. For those of you that don't know what blanching is, you just give them a quick bath in hot water, boiling water. I've got one tray left and that's for my kale or kale or any kind of greens really. And I'm going to shoot you straight. Any kind of greens are not going to reconstitute well. You put them in water after they're freeze dried and they're just going to turn into a big pile of mush. So I'm going to show you what to do. So get yourself a blender. A Vitamix or a Ninja works the best because they kind of just pulverize everything and turn it into a paste. And that's kind of what your goal is, is to turn it into a paste with the least amount of water. So you're going to get some water and just slowly add water, but put your greens in the mixer, add just a little bit of water. So I learned this little trick from Prepared to Thrive, who is a fellow YouTuber and a fellow freeze dryer. And once I learned this trick from him, I use it every morning in green smoothies. So another cool thing about the kale or any kind of greens that you do like this is you can just, you can pack this in like crazy. This, this is three huge clumps of kale and it's not even gonna fill one tray. So if you did a whole batch of kale, I mean, you could probably fit just a massive amount in here. It's a great way to get nutrition easily and it doesn't taste like kale <laughs> if you just sprinkle it on top of stuff. Uh, kale doesn't have the greatest taste if you're just eating it plain. It's also a good way to get your kids to eat their vegetables. The tough part's all done. I'm gonna throw these in the deep freeze and we'll get to freeze drying. Okay, we're gonna go to adjust cycle times and I think that we probably want to do around 10 hours for the final dry. It might take a little bit more just because some of that stuff is real watery. All right, our food is nice and cold, so we're going to hit start. We're going to kick pre-frozen and let that machine pre-freeze for about half an hour and get nice and cold. And the kilowatt meter is reset to zero. So our pre-freeze is complete. We're gonna put our trays in. It's been just about 29 hours exactly. I'm not sure if the 10 hours will totally dry this out, but we're gonna find out. Our kilowatt meter is 21.69 kilowatt hours. I really can't believe that all this got done in 29 hours. It seems like it's real fast definitely helps with the vegetables to pre-freeze them. All of this stuff looks like it's gonna store really, really well. It's real nice and light and airy. 
Now let's see how it all rehydrates. Before we do that, I'm gonna take this kale and put it into a bag. Uh, this stuff doesn't tend to absorb moisture like some of the other stuff does just from the air. Now that this is in a bag, we can kind of smash it down into a powder. And what's crazy to me is that this was, I can't remember if it was four or five big bunches of kale and it just smashes down into that. I mean, just imagine how much nutrition is just in that small little area. All right, I've got my rehydration station all set up here. And just from doing this as many times as I have, I can tell you that with vegetables, they're not going to reconstitute to the point where they're crunchy, like some things that are crunchy, like a carrot or a green pepper. It's not going to have that crunch to it, but if you are putting these in a soup or a stew or some other kind of recipe where it's going to have moisture in it, I can, I can tell you that they're going to turn out great. So I'm going to go ahead and put these all in the bowls, add water, and let them sit for about five minutes. While I was waiting for these to rehydrate, I went ahead and threw these in a Ziploc bag because around here this won't even last through our weekend, I'm guessing. We eat a lot of vegetables. But from a food preservation standpoint, this could be, depending on how big your garden is, this could be a month's worth of stuff out of your garden. And for $2.50 in electricity, this could last you until the next year until you're ready to pull more out of your garden. All right, it's been a little under five minutes. Some of this stuff could use some more time, but some of it's actually ready right now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the ones that are done. The peas are definitely good. Um, they are, the potatoes I was curious about because we did not blanch them and I wanted to see what would happen if you didn't blanch them and they really just turn almost like a purple color and they don't turn black, they might once you cook them, but really I'm sure they taste just fine. It's more about the uh, aesthetics of it. The cucumbers are very good. They're a little bit spongy, but depending on what you're using these for, if you're throwing them in a stew, if you're throwing them in a stir fry or something like that, you know, that it's going to turn into that, that consistency anyway. Tomatoes are the same way. Real spongy, as are most of these that we're doing today. They're, they just kind of get a little bit spongy. Zucchini is very similar to the the cucumber texture as with the green peppers and the carrots you can almost hear them the broccoli is taking a while to absorb that water and I would say the broccoli is probably the worst out of all of it it's still pretty crunchy but I think given some time it would it would be just fine well, I think vegetables are one of the best uses of the harvest right. They all uh, they all tend to do pretty well. I've learned a few things today. Hopefully you have too. Feel free to leave some comments for me in the comment section or some suggestions if you have some tips. This is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. I'll catch you next week.